Hey there friends, this is Garrett from the Kingdom Team and I am here at the beautiful, the wonderful, and the, I dare say, enchanting place we call Epcot. There it is, Spaceship Earth. Oh, what a beautiful sight she is. We're going to be doing a little tour, getting some updates as to what's going on here at Epcot. As you know, Epcot's going through a massive makeover right now. So let's jump right into it. But the first thing I'm going to check out is these pylons right there. That's where the new Epcot fountain is going to be. And they've been putting some work in there. So let's take a peek over there and then see what other mysteries Epcot has to share. All right, folks, so our first stop is going to be here, which is going to be outside of the Guardians of the Galaxy attraction titled Cosmic Rewind. It's coming along pretty well. This gray thing right here, as you may see, that actually is where they're going to be putting the Nova Core ship uh, that's on display. That's sort of going to be like the, the icon of the attraction. And uh, if it's your first time going to Epcot or learning about what's going on here, the building that I just showed you, that is not actually the the ride building, or sorry, the show building. It's actually this big blue building in the back that blends in with the skyline. That's actually where the entire attraction uh, track and all the special effects that the Imagineers have come up with, that's where it actually all begins. The building right in front of you right here, that is actually going to be where the pre-show and the queue is, where you get welcomed by Groot, Star-Lord, and all the Guardians, and then you go on a Cosmic Rewind, and uh, I'm looking forward to the attraction. There's been no date set as to when it is going to open. Hopefully 2021. Now, right next to Guardians of the Galaxy, there's an area here that, that used to be the Festival Center, and it is this gold building right there. And that's where all the festivals used to have a main attraction. So Flower and Garden, Food and Wine, you used to be able to go in there and see seminars and collect different things, but they are doing an extreme makeover of this area right here. You can see the Imagineers back there. They're working on something. It's definitely gonna be a brand new walkway and queue area or something that you can see back there. That you can see right there it's coming along you can't tell what's going on inside but inside that gold dome building that is going to be where they're going to be putting in the new i guess play pavilion which is sort of going to be uh, the way of disney inviting guests into their gaming world whether it's through the it, pretty much imagine wreck it ralph and you get to go into that world that's pretty much the best way to explain it the play pavilion you'll be able to play with your favorite disney characters and they'll have games like disney emoji blitz and all the other disney games that are either uh on your mobile device or on some form of gaming system it's hasn't been given a lot of uh a lot of details but it's it sounds exciting so when that opens up we'll see how exciting it actually is so i'm in front of mission space here but i'm not here to talk about mission space i'm here to talk about what's behind that dark wall now behind that dark wall recently installed was a sign for the new restaurant that's going to be coming here called space 220. Uh, on the show we talked about this many many months ago and the story behind so the story for the restaurant is you are going to be going into an elevator that will take you 220 miles uh, above earth and you are going to be eating at a restaurant in space and while there like you will not see windows of the outside world what is going to be a giant movie type screen where you're going to see projections uh, of astronauts rockets and like just other space stuff like you're just going to be looking out at the cosmos and it's going to be a truly mystifying thing but 
this restaurant has been plagued by disaster, whether it was the executive chef quitting or just being behind schedule by months and months and months. It was supposed to open, I think, fall 2020, but it's more than likely gonna be, I'm gonna guess summer 2021. Um, you can also see the, the, I'm gonna call it the show building, but where the restaurant actually is, it has that go away green color on it, and then it has that sky blue that blends in, and you can see that on the, to the left-hand side of Test Track, it's truly a mystery what's going on in there. There haven't been any images posted, not much information given about it, but it's exciting. They've got some new lights, they've got some plants out there. So hopefully when it does open, it will be a truly amazing experience. And from the footage I've taken, I can see that the entrance to get in there, you're going to walk by the entrance of Mission Space. You won't be going towards the missions, you're actually gonna be bearing off Test track, you're interrupting me. We're gonna be veering off to the right uh, where you see that second dark box. And he's gonna be having four neighborhoods here in Epcot. You're gonna have World Celebration, which is the main entrance way. You're gonna have wor uh, World Nature, which is going to be the over by the land and the seas. Over here, you've got World Discovery, which is about science discovery. And then you've got the World Showcase. And so I guess you get four worlds and you get Epcot. But over here, we've got two favorite attractions or i guess food food slash drink stuff you've got the donut box here which is coming this fall not saying when but this is where you can get some gourmet donuts you got strawberry glaze cake donut hole chocolate glaze red velvet Ooh, the red velvet sounds interesting i had the strawberry last year strawberry very delicious and then right here we got the cool wash this is where you get all your favorite coca-cola products it's a very seasonal type of uh quick service food and beverage here because sometimes it's open sometimes it's not you never really know usually on the weekends it is i'm in front of a brand new food kiosk that just opened i believe in the past week or so and it's the flavors of fire here it's hosted by the nfl on espn and all the dishes are pretty much cooked over an open fire so you got the corn beef corner route the chimichurri up offense the s'mores will be pylon and if you could not tell they are all they all have football terminology in there but take a look there take a look and it is located pretty much in between the walkway out to world showcase and test track and it seems fairly popular it's got a good line lined up flavors of fire right here i like the look of it it has sort of a you know a modern slash rustic look to it but they got some heat back there there they got food waiting for you if you want it uh, with Epcot's plans for its makeover, they pretty much, how do I say this delicately, they ripped out all the guts and they're creating a clean slate, so to speak. Um, yeah, they are doing massive construction back there. They're going to, uh, well, the plan was to have a three-tier uh, festival center that was going to have three different areas for guests to walk around on and experience the festivals that happen here as well as just use it for hanging out socializing drinking eating watching fireworks and the concept art behind it looks phenomenal it was modern architecture with concrete steel and glass combined with nature where you have this multi-story building that has living trees and plants on it and it honestly looked like a great place to i don't know just just explore but the future for that is somewhat up in the air because a while back Disney said that uh, some of the plans for Epcot uh, are either going to be put on hold or have to be changed, And but they didn't get so specific. So hopefully they keep that and they don't just put in some, some terrible little building that has no business being there. Like if they want Epcot to stand out as being a truly unique park and be uh, Walt's idea for the utopia uh, that he wanted to create, then they need something big like this, not just a normal building. Like you add something big like that, it's certainly gonna catch attention. So the future for that is unknown. I, I have hoped that it will be nothing short of beauty and greatness. My fingers crossed because again, like I said, the concept art for that entire area called World Celebration looks amazing. The Imagineers really uh, knocked it out of the ballpark with that where they have sort of a statue of Walt and they have, you know, it's, it's sort of like a botanical magical garden. So 
fingers crossed that that helps. And keep your fingers crossed. Keep your fingers crossed. But now, off to World Showcase. Uh, it's time to get some food in Norway because I hear that a nice little shop in Norway is serving some delicious Norwegian delicacies. I'm a liar and I'm a cotton-headed ninny muggins because I betrayed your trust. I told you that I'd be going to Norway to get some delicacies, but that is not true because the Kringla Bakery right here in Norway is currently closed. And it is a dang shame. Like, I can't get open. But you can see that they're clearly set up. So, on Saturday the 26th of September, it was open and they had a limited menu, which you can understand because they're not going to put out everything with limited guests. And they were running, 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 having a great time. And I show up today, doors closed, no one in there. I asked a cast member and he said that on Saturday it was open and it was very successful. However, he believes that it's only going to be open on weekends or on busy days due to there not being that many guests uh, in Epcot except for the weekends. It's understandable. It's saddening. I would have loved some school bread. Apparently they have, I think it's school bread that has Bruni on it. That's the little lizard, the fire salamander from Frozen 2. Love that guy. He's cute and adorable. Bonjour friends, this is your pal Garrett, now in the beautiful country of France. But the main reason I'm here is what's beyond that wall right there. And behind there is the France expansion. And that's gonna look quite spectacular. Yeah. So back there there's gonna be three new parts of France. The first thing, it may seem not as important, but it is. They're adding a huge new restroom back there. Uh, in French it is Le Toilette, which is the toilet, and that's going to be back there. If you've ever used the bathroom here, there's only one bathroom, and it's in the back by the uh, by the market where the exit of um, Impressions de France is, slash the Beauty and the Beast uh, sing-along. And there's only two, like it's unisex, but still, two bathrooms in a country of this size? Come on, come on. The only other near one is you either got to run your way to International Gateway, and leave the park or you got to make it to england but they're going to be adding a big one back there also they're going to be adding a crepery which is where you can get you know fresh crepes get it with all sorts of things whether it's uh, like nutella and banana uh jambon et fromage which is ham and cheese i'm sure they're going to have a bunch of different ones i'm really excited about that crepes are are lovely they're light they're so tasteful and i'm going to say i'm sorry I prefer them to pancakes. I'm sorry, I'm not a pancake guy. I'm more of a waffle guy, but crepes, I could have me a whole mess of crepes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, and then back there, the final piece that I have not mentioned yet is all about that name right there. It is their new Ratatouille attraction. Ratatouille is probably my second favorite uh, Pixar film behind Toy Story. Love it. And because I always say it, whenever it comes up, the name of the attraction in French is Ratatouille La Toute Monde. 
2K de Remy. And what that means is uh, Ratatouille, Remy's Totally Zany Adventure. And I really hope that the French name is on there because I will never get tired of saying it. But if it's not, I'm still going to say it anyway because uh, I love it. And it's the only time I actually get to practice any French that I can remember. All right, folks, I'm now exiting the park. And I remember there's one more thing I wanted to show you. It's a small little detail, but you know, Disney's big on the little details, making the most magic. Here at the Epcot sort of turnstiles and entranceway, they have these new signs here, which were recently installed. And they may look simple, but they look really good and match the overall Epcot theme. They have that Epcot font. I think overall they look pretty dang fantastic. So little details, little details, but I like them a lot. It will be amazing to see when all these are open up, welcoming back tens of thousands of guests all at once. It's time to go home and dry off. But in the meantime, I've had a lovely experience here at Epcot and you have been lovely company. Thank you so much for joining me on this adventure. Be sure to check back on the channel every week for new content, whether it's from the live show or whether it's from Wade and I in the parks. We love sharing our Disney experiences with you, my friends. In the meantime, don't forget that I'm gonna be doing a whole France expansion vlog that's separate. So check back to that. But it's been geared from the Kingdom team and it's been a pleasure. Welcome.